Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hola. Well, welcome to decoding the language of the hand. So we're going to bring something uh, very special to you today. And it's all about these. And uh, we understand that a lot of people use hand gestures as body language, but it's much, we're going to take you much, much deeper than that. And so we have an exciting show for you today, and uh, maybe we'll even get some little bit of live reading with Kelly here. So uh, for those of you that maybe are joining us for the first time, my name is Carol Maureen Friesen, and I have Heaven and Earth Sanctuary, home of the Lightworkers Institute here in Costa Rica. And we train lightworkers how to get really back in their bodies and very grounded and understand the language of their body mind which is the language of uh the soul that speaks through us and uh so many people are saying you know get rid of the ego get rid of the ego i says well i love people's ego that's their personality it makes them different that's the spark of god that uh, makes us also individual and our body language unique to ourselves and how our soul the, our soul expresses through our body so uh Kelly, if you want to introduce yourself and uh, where are you coming from? <laughs> I'm also here in Costa Rica. I live just down the street from Carol and my business is rewilding. So I've incorporated the best of psychosomatic therapy and some different somatic healing modalities to empower people to take body language and apply it to their lives so they can uh, reprogram themselves from the inside out. Yeah. And I was just uh, did a talk in, uh, Nashville, and I talked about the three A's, awareness, alignment, and awakening, and uh, how our outer world uh, reflects what's going on inside of us, but even how to elevate our own frequencies, even through the clothes we wear, and uh, the expression that we have for the outer world, and we've talked a lot about this, Kelly, is the frequencies of material, and I did... Uh, talk about uh you know linen 100 percent linen which is what i got on 100 percent linen which uh, has a frequency of 5000 megahertz and uh with wool having 5000 megahertz but not wearing them together because the uh, apparently the frequency frequencies go in two different directions so, you know, I haven't quite figured it all out yet, but I was thinking linen is because it's a cooling fabric, more in the negative, obviously the yin energy, but then uh, wool being a warm for warmth, more in hmm. the positive. So I'm not sure how that works, but apparently the two cancel each other out. 
to a zero point. And apparently it says that in the Bible, because even though I've never read the Bible, but, I, you know, the stuff uh, I have researched on it and uh, our bodies in a healthy body frequency anywhere from 70 to 100 uh, megahertz is what our body vibrates at. So to bring it up just even with uh, linen, it's amazing. And even cotton, cotton is being like at 120 uh, megahertz. It's right around 100. It's like right around what we are. Yeah, 100. But I think organic cotton, they say, is about 120. So I there's different uh, studies out there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and polyester and rayon and all Those of are the worst. Plastic. Even silk is not good. Silk is yeah. uh, low vibrational. Yeah, but it blocks the energy, apparently, not just negatively, but it also blocks the frequency from us vibrating. And now that and lowers I, ours. Yeah, lowers ours. And mm -hmm. uh, apparently linen is the uh, armor of God, they call it. So, well, I was I was going to say that uh, when there's descriptions of heaven and how people are dressed in heaven, it's always white robes of linen. And in the Bible, there's so much alchemy and magic and uh, I would say like esoteric stuff and quantum, uh, quantum energetic stuff. It's just they, they change the languaging of it all to, to keep it from us. I mean, even in the Old Testament, it would talk about how David would play music and Saul's soul would be soothed. Well, now we understand what sound healing does. <laughs> well, to us. we are all just sound and color in a, in a dense form. So uh, the more we can bring up our frequencies. And I was going to say, like, for two nights now, I've had my linen, 100% linen sheets. And I just, I go way deep into a sleep wow. that I've never experienced before. It's, it's a really weird, um, and I, I'm sleeping like all through the night before I would wow. wake up quite a few times. And I'm really enjoying the 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 linen sheets like big time. And if you're wow. going to replace your sheets, I would suggest try the linen sheets and 100% uh, linen. And yes, they do crease a little bit more. But what I'm finding, they're not near as slippery. And like my bed isn't all every which way. It seems to stay in place. <laughs> So uh, that's been a real uh, treat, like just uh, experiencing what those linen sheets can do. And I'm on, I think, yeah, I think two nights. They now used to wrap that. people in linens in the hospital too. This is where we even probably got the word linen, changed the linens. Yeah, well, right? it's we probably all slept in linen. Yeah, it's a healing fabric, right? That mm -hmm. frequency is bringing it up. And they used it for band-aids and everything was linens. And uh so yeah, it's getting back to nature. And of course it's made, uh, linens are made out of flax. So, um, and organic flax. So that's interesting. So Kelly, are we going to dive right into the hands now that we've talked about the outer world? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the alignment I brought in was about being authentic, uh, ourselves and being able to speak our truth and then, uh, awakening, uh, part of it was is awakening every cell and atom in our body and uh, in our inner world and so uh, that was really really interesting just to get people more aligned with their feet and usually what I bring in and and some breath work so not much you can do in 20 minutes so uh, but it was fun it's fun to do plus I had uh, Sean the uh, Trump impersonator he introduced me so he was talking about lied to me and about body language and how interested he was in in that lovely lovely man uh he was yeah so his name's Sean I forget his last name but I'm sure we'll get a clip out because they're breaking all the little clips of all the different speakers so Great. okay so and before we get started I'm uh, not sure if the viewers know the day that we're recording is your birthday. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> I won't sing the whole song. I'm not sure if I can actually hold that that key. 
Well, we uh, we got everyone to sing this little light of mine. I had Donna come up on stage. And, oh, I'm sure she loved that. Yeah. She said, I'm not singing. I said, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. She she uh, she was good sport about it. And everyone got up and sang. You know, the men, they all came up and later said, I love that song. I haven't sang that forever. So sometimes we can sing. Yeah. So this time last year, I was in Tucson, Arizona for my birthday. So, yeah, 67 my uh i i did the 66 and the six you know it was the sixth year last year and i says i'm taking all the sixes back including a two four six so i took five sixes back last year so we can use their magic against them too so we it's interesting how much our our uh, charts and stuff overlap like i just found out today you're libra i got tons of libra in my chart oh really? we're both yeah, we're both two, four. I, I think Libra is the most that I have in my chart. And uh, yeah, we're both two, four, sixes, gold ray. Uh, motorcycle going by. Probably hit me any second. Yeah. Or drive by me. I am starting to hear the river pretty loudly up here on this hill. I woke up this morning pretty surprised how loud it was. It must be thunderous where you are. Oh, I'm hoping, well, there's someone blowing up rocks across the river. Oh, my God. I just, I thought a propane, a propane tank blew up. But uh, Yeah, it's, uh, there was like six of them. I says, I sure hope they're going to stop before we get on a show because every time it was just like a rude like the whole mountain would vibrate right wow yeah okay so uh we have language of the hands this is part of our manual for uh i wonder if i can get this big can you see it kelly yeah i'm going to shrink us though as we talk about it off my video okay yeah this is uh what we're gonna touch on today this is part of we take a whole day to learn how to read the hands and it is part of uh it's our sixth day on uh in our 14 day training and we go through a lot of people have never spent the whole day just looking at their hands and uh so the hands uh, express our, our knowledge of life and wisdom of the soul. As the extensions of the heart, they communicate the lower and upper aspects of self in being human. Hands reach out, sense life, and respond to it. The language of the hands speak your emotions through touch. Touch is the energy and sensory awareness of the heart chakra. So I don't know how much we want to read of this, Kelly. Uh, of course, it's it's a full day class, right? <laughs> so our hands is something. Um, you know what? I, I was going to say maybe we can get into the good stuff of the of the hand reading. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to stop share for a minute and uh, actually turn the camera. Back. What What's fascinating? I found this out working with uh, one of my coaches. Um, the, the hands where they form actually come out of the heart. So the hands being the extension of the heart chakra, quite literally, they, they are, they are, they grow out of our heart. Isn't that fascinating? That is yeah. fascinating to me. Well, we have touch. I mean, if you go through the five senses and review it again, base chakra being smell, and that's the most primordial uh, animal instinct, like dogs and animals they don't even see as much as they smell. That's their primal force. And then sacral chakra is a taste. Uh, solar plexus is sight, because we see things, we perceive things through our uh, life experiences. Yeah, mm -hmm. through our life experiences and what rose-colored glasses we have on. And then uh, the heart chakra is touch. And then uh, throat is sound. And Which so, 
I was yeah. just going to say how funny it was when you started speaking about hands, we are going to touch on hands today. <laughs> yeah. Touch on hands. Well, most people don't even realize their hands can be quite different from one to the other. And I'll say, well, how long have you had these hands? Most people don't even look at it, you know, because this, I have one that's really practical and one that's more conical. And so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, they can be quite different, of course, coming from left and right brain function, right? And uh, when you look at the hand itself, this is all based in like uh, body energy. And then this is mental energy. So this is all mind stuff. And this is body. It's 50 50, you, you know, quite you know, pretty well where the feet are, you know, the whole foot is a lot more. And then the toes is mental. So we can tell what a person is basically saying, even with gestures, what part of the hands they're touching. And uh, when you understand all this, uh, it's really, really interesting to watch what people aren't saying just with the gestures of the hands. So this, mm -hmm. like I say, is all mental and we'll bring up the chart too, but this is base chakra. This is sacral chakra. This is solar plex. This is heart. This is throat, third eye, and then crown. And our fingerprint is basically our crown chakra on the, that's what makes us unique, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it is that point of balance coming from the heart chakra, right? A lot of people say, um, like the heart, they think it's the eyes, the soul coming through, but we, we see through our solar plexus. So, um, in my manual for soul much love, I use the G7 uh, as my models for the hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's actually quite funny because not one of them has a confident uh hand gesture where i feel like they're in, in integrity it looks like they're all hiding something yeah a lot lot speaks through the hands and yep. uh and, and their able, feet posture yeah to be able to notice it is so uh intriguing too i mean mm -hmm. uh we can tell exactly. So we do go through a lot of the quadrants. And uh, so this is kind of like uh, face shapes or zones of the face, but it's the quadrants of the hands. Where is the most amount of energy in the outer world or in the inner world? So when you put your hand down at the side and you're uh, longest finger, which we, we call the Saturn finger. It's the uh, spiritual finger. It should fall right on the seam of the pants or on the seam of a skirt or right on the side. So whatever goes forward, the thumb, the, uh, the pointer finger, or index finger, and half the spiritual finger is our outer world. And then the uh, half the spiritual finger and the ring finger and the little finger is our inner world. So we can tell which things are pointing. So I don't think we should go into too much of the quadrants. Uh, that's more for a class. Uh, we do have all the chakras lined up here where we've got the base chakra, which is the red part. That's the Venus mound. And uh, our thumb is we have free will. So we're the only animal on the planet that has a free will. The rest is like group consciousness. We have individual consciousness, like animals is group consciousness. And then plants are single consciousness. So um, yeah. So our thumb shows, a, a, you know, says a lot. They say the monkey has a, a little bit of a thumb, but it's undeveloped. And it's sort of, uh, it's, uh, deep inside the hand it doesn't it doesn't uh it's not uh free it's sort of attached just a, a small little thumb so we have uh all the individual digits mean something uh especially on the uh, fingers all mean something and uh here we got base, which is smell, sacral, which is taste, 
it's showing it on the hands. Uh, we said this early, solar plexus, solar plexus is sight, heart is touch, sound is throat, and a subatomic and atomic in the higher ones. So each finger means something, and uh, the thumb is uh, attached to the mound of Venus, which is our, our will. I will do it, and that's why Trump always has that thumb up. I will do it. Uh, the One thing I love to point out with the will is it's rooted in our mount of love and compassion. So yeah. it's not badgering it through life. It's rooted in love. It's what I call anchored in uh, the Mount of Venus, right? Which is love. And our will should be dr driven, if we want to call it, or uh, anchored, inspired, inspired by uh, Venus, which is love and compassion, which is copper, right? And then we have uh, the moon mound. That is our inner world. It is uh, the sacral chakra. It is also attached to the metaphysics or the mysteries of life, mystery of creation. And someone that uh, is pregnant uh, or can't get pregnant, we suggest, or has strong menstrual cycles, it's really good to uh, massage the moon mound on the hand and it activates uh, connected to the sacral chakra, right? And then we have the two Mars mounds. This is our action. We take action through Mars and our reaction is in the negative and positive of Mars. Jupiter, these are mounds. These are, uh, here is uh, reserves or reservoir of energy. So sometimes people are really puffed up in these areas or if someone's very depleted, they would have, uh, you've seen hands that are quite flat and almost uh, not much backup energy because they put it all out. And we also, we look at the different types of hands. There's combination hands. Then we have elementary hands. These are usually thick. I almost want to say like cavemen hands. They're very uh, earthy. And uh, you'll often, their feet usually match this too. They would almost have uh, solid, flat, uh, elemental feet also, very thick. And then we have conical, no, what do we have? Spatulate hands. Spatulate hands are, I think we can see it better in a, one of the other pictures, but this is almost you zoom, like- You can zoom in on it, that little they, arrow. Yeah, they splay. Which little arrow? Uh, go down to the right, and there's a magnifying oh, yeah, glass. Closet. Yeah. Yeah, we almost call them like ET hands because the their uh, the fingertips. The knuckles. No, the fingertips splays out. So when we think of um, like a nozzle. For spray paint and it's very very fine or you have a very wide one so this is more splayed is more wide dumps call them et fingers so it's actually widens out in the uh, top digit then we have square and practical hands where are they oh well, here they are so that would be you can tell when a hand is quite square and also squarish in the fingertips itself, where conical can be squarish, but then it's, it's conical how they keep their fingers together. It's almost like a cone shape. And then psychic hands, they almost look like the spatulate hands, but they're very thin and delicate, almost to the point where they can do very fine needlework point, like needlework, and these people are what we call the quite psychic psychic or idealistic, um, probably out in La La Land. And uh, I often tell the story about uh, there was a woman that Herman was working with and she had this type of hands and she loved mice. And so she made all these little mice 
characters in her basement and sold them. And they had like shopping carts and there was whole families. The whole basement was full. She'd taken about six months and made all these mice. And then her husband said, you know, you got to get rid of all these things. And so she went to a Christmas sale and she sold everything but one. And a few weeks later, her whole basement filled up with real mice because she you know she had put that consciousness in there and so of course she would never kill them or anything so they've got exterminators and they put in all the traps and got rid of all the mice but they took them out somewhere in the coolies in Alberta and let them go so I always think of that story when I when I see these psychic hands and then these are intuitive hands intuitive hands has a much larger palm so the reason we would call it intuitive because it's more has more of a body part of it the the lower four chakras and then shorter fingers so that whereas the psychic hands they have the long skinny fingers which is the mental energy so it's like the mind reaching out looking for information yeah well this is holding information in the body here it's all <laughs> going out right Mm -hmm. and then we look at conditions of the hands so elasticity firmness and this we can tell a lot in handshakes which we're, we are going to do a, towards the end do some uh, go through some gestures of the hands where you can um, like different handshakes these are things that uh, you can feel immediately even by shaking someone hand someone's mm -hmm. hands what they're all about so uh you want to do mounds or no? I think that's complicated. That's yeah, good. that's complicated. Yeah. So we're going to stick with some of the easy stuff just to give you a taste of it. It starts with Apollo. I like to start with uh, Jupiter because it's the first finger and Jupiter is the index finger. It's the judgment finger. And... Um, the base is wisdom. We, we take one of these words or financial drive. The middle digit is dignity and the top di digit is pride. So this finger tells us whether we are standing in pride and dignity for our wisdom. So that is the pointer finger. It is the, um, this is it, I guess here. Uh, it's so beautiful how within us the creator is telling us where our judgments should come from. They should come from the wisdom of the life that we have lived. And we should be carrying this wisdom with pride and dignity. That's beautiful. Well, yeah, I mean, wouldn't you tell that inner child to stand in, our grandparents or grandmother would tell us to stand in pride and dignity. Who else can you be proud of but yourself, right? It's so, beautiful to see it come alive in the language to realize that the artwork of us is always love. It's always this beautiful instruction and invitation to live in a way that is kind and loving and full of peace. Because oftentimes when we think of judgment, when we say that the index finger is the judgment finger, people have a negative connotation of judgment because of what religion has done or what governments have done. They judge us for being outside of the norm. They judge us if, if we speed, you know, there's so many things that we get judged for, for sin, whatever. And this is shifting that away from the fear and back into the love. This is why, I mean, I, I was a staunch Christian for almost 30 years and at the same time, I was at war and, and learning body language has taught me how to be at peace with myself. Everything is love. Well, it's at peace with the body, right? It's, mm -hmm. uh, and, and marveling at these beautiful instruments. Yet, yeah, when's the last time anyone took a whole day just to marvel at their hands or someone else's hands and someone's looking at your hands in the class and you see all of these different things and then you understand maybe why you cut you know, a certain part of the finger or had a sore or lost a nail or whatever it is, right? Um, the, the fingers tell us so much. And until we understand it, it's, you know, it's, uh, 
Yeah. And your finger, your hands actually respond. It's like a child when you spend a whole day and just marveling, you know, there's so much, so much recognition that it brings the consciousness back into the flesh when you understand the hands Mm -hmm. and how we touch. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing kids and and babies do is hand to mouth, hand to mouth. (laughs) So this middle which, finger, oh, sorry, Kelly. I was just going to say, which to me says so much about how we're invited to explore life as cosmic children, like reaching out with our heart, always bringing that into our create, into our creativity. Everything about body language is a love song. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And so the middle finger is our spiritual finger. It's Saturn. Uh, Saturn rules spirituality. And it is a kind of it's a mediator between our inner and outer world. So we take uh, half of the spiritual finger and our inner and then outer world. And the top part being spirituality and middle one being happiness in the material world. And uh, how we find that inner and outer balance. Could we also frame it that our material well-being and happiness is found in fulfilling our spiritual pers- purpose? Could could we also read it that way? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I mean, you got to join inside. Happiness is kind of what's happening material world is you know what what is uh happiness right in the material world is it a car or is it fulfilling your mission right Mm -hmm. so uh this finger mediates between the inner and outer sides of the hands and represents the person's ideas of right and wrong a long spiritual finger indicates a love for introspection and a stubborn curiosity about what is it insoluble questions yeah Mm -hmm. of existence if it is bent towards the jupiter finger this person loves to be on their own so if it is bent towards the jupiter is that the ring finger no jupiter is the index finger index finger okay yeah uh when no, with a short uh, Saturn finger, the person has a difficulty distinguishing between right and wrong. So it hasn't grown as much because that is the longest finger. It's the most important. You know, if you go in grades, uh, mm. meaning the, the length and the it is the longest finger. And, and, and so it is the most important. They're all important, but. It's saying this is uh, number one. And look right there. There's the code. If you desire to understand what is right and wrong, or another way to say it is aligned and misaligned yeah. is to grow in your spirituality. The, 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 our soul, our spirit is the seat of all truth. Fulfilling that. Then mm-hmm. the next finger we go to is the Apollo. That's our, uh, ring finger and or our ambition we call it ambition finger because it is fire and it's uh we say the top part is our intellect and the middle finger the middle digit is financial success and then the bottom digit is self-expression so when you have self-expression uh and you can speak freely financial success will come and we can use our intellect to to balance that out. So um, we love. It's also just the smartest thing to do, right? To to be ourselves, like it, it's the path of least resistance to be ourselves. So of course it's, that's intelligent. It's also our ring finger, and so <laughs> if you notice, I'm going to turn a video back on. Is that we don't wear rings. <laughs> Because as soon as you put a ring around uh, the finger, and if it's tight, uh, it's choking our throat chakra. And also, um, if uh, either get that ring size to a bigger size, 
and or get a good good divorce lawyer, I usually say, just because your self-expression is being choked. And women wear their wedding rings a lot more than men do, right? So, uh, And yeah. how often do, do, I mean, I don't want to bag on marriage because eventually I, I would love to be in partnership and how many humans uh, strangle their self-expression in partnership. Yeah, or even not even just in partnership in life in general. I mean, yeah. you know, and the more you can speak, uh, you know, your life's purpose and more you can express yourself, the more that financial success will come. Right. So a lot of people will, you know, immediately pump this up and this one. And we, you know, we look at all the different uh, parts of the hand, too, which, of course, we can't do in something like this. But back to sharing. So that's Apollo, which is our uh, ambition finger or the sun. And then Mercury is the little finger. And the little finger does tell us a lot. So the the top one is uh, vivaciousness. So how vivacious we are and how we speak. Uh, diplomatic speech is, uh, you know, are we use a lot of diplomacy and then quickness of mind or do we just spew it all out? and um, be, be, being able to articulate our own vivaciousness in the little finger being communication, but it is also um, a lot of this can come in the little finger even growing up is when someone, uh, they try to make us conform at a really young age. Don't be too vivacious in how you express yourself, right? Uh, even the word vivacious is it's usually only spoken of like a sex siren right a what when was a lot like someone who's like really sexy like a sexy woman oh she's vivacious I've never really heard vivacious used in a lot of other ways so well a, a kid, it's just you know interesting what? how they've shamed the word is what yeah. I'm saying yeah that's true but a lot of people that are very uh, charismatic, you know, even as children, they're full of piss and vinegar, right? And then they try to calm that down. And you can actually see when the finger starts to uh, maybe um, goes inward or a bit or goes a little bit crooked. Mine goes, I, I want to show mine. Stop share. Yep. Yeah. It's going back and forth. Let's, let's see if you can, where's the best way to see it? So maybe if I do it on my forehead, yeah, there you go. So you can see it, it kind of goes in right there at the second digit. Do you see yeah. that? Yeah. And then from this way, it looks like that. Can't really tell from this way a little bit. What do you think that means? Well, it's wasted, I mean, when, when you we, we say wasted or a little bit indented, is uh you may be having to cut back your words or you you know uh you didn't know quite how to express it with diplomacy oh diplomacy. yeah that feels true both of those feel true and just to tie this into how our past can shape us because i i love anchoring this in the body for folks so i grew up in a home where uh, my mother scram at the top of her lungs every day. She experienced bipolar. My dad was also, uh, very belittling towards us. And so there wasn't a lot of space for me to express myself. So what Carol is saying, it's like, I had a lot, but my voice was cut off for a long time. And also, you know, the emotional expression. Yeah. One time I, uh, I was mad at Herman, I think. <laughs> something I can't remember but I wasn't very diplomatic and I cut myself right right on the diplomatic speech mm. on my outer world like on the right side right and yeah and I said oh what does that mean oh no right so yeah I, and I had so no much. model of diplomatic speech so of course that would be wasted for me it's like yeah, when you think of honor. it, uh, the naughty fingers, I don't know if we actually looked at those hands, is when there is uh, a lock in in any of the joints, it means that it's the energy is going like this, and then it stops and we overthink things, and that before it can go out. 
So that's why the my mom, naughty, Oliver. Sorry, yeah, the ahead. naughty fingers. We call them. Uh, they're uh, arthritic almost. They can go into because they're not expressing themselves. So we can tell which digit it is. Even I've. It's interesting. Even as a child, I noticed these things. I, I I've looked at my pinky since I was a child and wondered why are my pinky shaped like this. And I would also look at my mother's hands, her fingers. She, I, I don't know how to explain it other than to say it's it's sort of like spatula slash frog fingers, where every single oh yeah um uh joint digit, digit is swollen. And then the tips of the finger are actually, all the tips of her finger are actually pretty swollen too. Splayed and out. I remember, yeah, I, me I remember as a child pointing it out and asking her why her fingers are like that, just like out of curiosity. I probably, well, what I really said is you look like you have frog fingers, but that was just like the innocence of my child speaking of what yeah. frog fingers look like. It wasn't making fun of her, but it's interesting. Well, so, it and, and she did have a lot that was, I mean, even though she was explosive in her expression, like her real self was really suppressed. When you think of uh, a charismatic speaker, you know, they can, woo, and they're almost like painting a picture. And, uh, you know, even a charismatic healer, they're going, I'll heal you. And they throw all the energy because if a person is quite clairvoyant or psychic, they can see energy coming out of someone's hands when mm -hmm. they're when they're energetically if you can see that and it, when they splay out the fingers it just means they have a wider brush right they're not mm -hmm. as pinpointed and so yeah she was my mom was all over the place yeah that makes sense hands are so important whatever you do with them mm -hmm. even you know when someone's touching any part of the hands we we're always reading what what part are they touching, right? So, uh, you know, once you once you learn all of these, this is will, love, wisdom, active intelligence. You've got, uh, you know, uh, pride, dignity, and wisdom, spirituality, happiness in the material world, intellect, uh, financial success, and self-expression, vivaciousness, uh, diplomatic speech, and quickness of speech. So it's really good to even write those on a, you know, draw out your hands and memorize them, you know, because if anyone, even politicians are talking and they're even doing this, you know, you can tell what they're what they're rubbing at a subconscious level. There's so much in the hands. It's so important. Everything, the hands, the face, the micro expressions, the feet. Remember, remember in our last training, you pointed out my left big toe just kept going up. Like every, every time I would talk, even something so simple as like a wonky toe doing something while somebody's talking that clued me into, you know, not wanting to ground my emotions and shifting how I do that. Right. So this is why we, we tune into the language of all the digits and the, every part of the hand, because what is our body communicating and how is it wanting to rebalance? Oh, yeah. And especially in the galactic signature, too. I mean, because it's all ties up with the uh, 20 seals, 10 toes, 10 fingers and 13 joints. Right. And that big toe lifting, that's the blue eagle. That's the visionary. So get me yeah. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny because it's my it, it's it's a strength I, and it's a sensitivity at the same time. There's so much to read in a person. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful to understand ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. then we go to Venus, which is the thumb. That is our will. And the top is will and logic, which is a point of balance. Uh, and which we call love wisdom. And uh, the base is physical stamina or sensuality of energy so the large base that's love the anchored in love so that's active intelligence so thumbs can be different sizes that's what long thumbs short thumbs they all mean something and uh so we go through this in all our training and really really start to understand our our 
our hands at a very deep level. It's very mental energy too. Then we also look at all the different tips of the fingers and each finger can be quite different. Some might be squared off and some might be conical or uh, more uh, pointed. And uh, so that would just uh, indicate how, uh, how we handle things and bring things to a point. I want to highlight on something because we've done a lot on face shapes as well. So when we go to the, the shapes of the fingers, uh, you can go back down the other way. I was going to go hand. I mean, the uh, this is often how. I know, but I was making a point with the fingers. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was just thinking hand shapes is, you know, the square, the conical would be more to an oval face. Uh, inverted triangle would be the elementary hand. Not inverted, sorry, a, a triangular face would be inverted. Yeah, and fingers often follow that, right? Yeah, so right here we see the square tip. This is very much like what square faces would be like. We, there's even square ears. Same with conical tips or an oval face or even rounded ears, you know, starting to see themes throughout people's body. Yeah, you'd also like pointed would might be, be the inverted triangle mm -hmm. uh, because they're very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So when we're reading, we're reading different thicknesses and different parts. Sometimes part of the one of the digits can be really puffed up and then lacking uh, uh, tissue maybe in the next di digit up. So these all mean something. And hands are really, really fascinating uh, how we uh, read hands and come up with a report. And it says everything says, you know, uh, everything about us in the hands and often matches what's happening in the face and the feet. Mm -hmm. So And the body. Uh, and the body, <laughs> yeah. Because we have all of our chakras in our face, hands, feet, and obviously the body. So... The same thing, themes we see in the face, we're gonna see in the hands and the feet and the body. So I was gonna share just a little bit out of the masters. Maybe we wanna read a couple of hands. Uh, I have it up here. So this is from our master's program. So the fine tools of the body mind is the hands. And here we go through all the shapes quadrants this is tips of the fingers which way they're pointing means something and the chakras again i don't know how much we wow i don't remember going over this in the masters uh it's also be been years since i took it three years yeah it should be in your books i don't think i put it up on powerpoint i don't know if i had my projector working or what so these are reading of the hands so we have a few here if you notice this hand how different it is from one to the other yeah the one on the left has more tissue and it's bigger yeah which would be the right hand right i mean because we're looking the opposite you held your hands backwards that would be more practical on the uh in their left brain function in their personality is more practical but they hold all their fingers apart even like this is uh we're kind of looking at they're all separated right they're maybe not together working together on things uh this, what we want to do is call out a couple of things here is that little finger is quite far apart from the, uh, the ambition finger. So the uh, Apollo, I should call it the fire. And it just means that they don't necessarily express, communicate what's in their heart. They kind of keep it separate. 
I think you want my pinkies. My pinkies have been like that for a while. And even when I bring it closer, it shakes. The pinky will start shaking when I try to bring it closer to the ring finger. Yeah, it was in, um, if you go back here, I don't know where it is in the masters, but I know where it is here. Uh, Mercury, Mercury, hmm. excuse me. Um, this finger uh, influences all form of communication ranging from relationship to sexuality and to diplomatic speech. The length of this finger, conversely long or adversely short, tells you what affects these traits. If the finger is held apart from the others, she or he feels alienated from their own heart or from the hearts of others. If it is held only a slight distance from the uh, finger of Apollo, means he or she has his mind, uh, speaks his mind freely. So one thing I noticed on Melania, she her finger is way apart. Like she, her little finger is held out way uh, apart from uh, the rest of her hand. So I would say that's almost her. <laughs> so where? Yeah, am I? and I would say just to bring this for those who are watching and maybe wondering how this applies to them, I would say that growing up, I did feel alienated from the hearts of my family, which I then in turn did alienate me from my own heart for many years. It's been a reclamation pro pro process. So this last uh, bit of hands here, we just, it, I would say these are almost elemental, very practical, uh, thick. But what I'm noticing here is the a th the ring finger or Apollo finger is so much is quite a bit longer than the judgment finger. And when the when the uh, Apollo or ring finger is longer, it means their ambition is more important than their self pride. So they someone that has their Jupiter finger longer often can get their nose out of joint. If um, you know, because they're they'll let their pride override their ambition. So they might quit their job just because their ego got bruised. Kind of how we might express that. I also would wonder if they'd be more willing to compromise their integrity to get ahead with their ambition finger being longer than their judgment. If their ambition, their need to get ahead is more important than being in integrity with their judgment. It could go either way, I guess. Depends if it's mm -hmm. crooked or not. I just noticed on Trump's hand, his his ambition is way longer than his self-pride. Like, right? Doesn't let his pride get in the way. So it could read either way, right? Mm-hmm. It's putting all the messages together, all the clues. Well, I do it even like looking at the nose. His nose is quite a bit shorter. Um, it's got a, he's got a small nose. That's how I see it. Okay. We wanted to bring up one more thing is gestures of the hands, which I have in the, um, body awakening method and we have like uh sort of gestures of the hands and i think we should read this kelly you want to read it mm -hmm. people gesture constantly with their hands <clears throat> so it's fairly easy to see Sorry, i gotta move the pictures of us yeah i'm gonna Yeah, I'm going to close mine. People gesture constantly with their hands, so it's fairly easy to see whether they have earth, fire, air, or water hands. But before getting too specific about what fingers, mounds, hands, and lines mean for romance, let's take a broader picture of what the hands are saying in terms of body language. 
Experts say that your hand positions show what's really going on in your mind. Palms out mean openness. This clenched indicate you may be hiding something or you're nervous about revealing something about yourself. The way you hold your arms either wrapped about around, either wrapped around your body or hanging loose at your sides can indicate whether or not you're defensive and insecure or relaxed and comfortable. Hands can be a giveaway to what you're feeling, says Dr. Vernon Coleman. Unspoken anxieties are often portrayed when people hold or clutch something in front of them, like a purse or a newspaper. Also, I've noticed people will stand behind things to feel safer. So yeah, especially podium in front of them. And especially in pictures and stuff, someone that's mm -hmm. put on a lot of weight, they'll hide behind their kid or you know, I, I notice a lot of that and or put their purse in front of their stomach or a pillow when they're sitting. You ever notice that? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, while people who put their hands on their hips or hook their, <clears throat> or hook their thumbs through a belt loop are trying to look important or attractive, even something as simple and universal as a handshake with each party extending a right hand isn't always what it appears. This gesture of greeting and leaving often conveys a message, sometimes not a, su a subtle one. <clears throat> So a take control kind of handshake is when a person who reaches out, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I need to mute for a second and call. Okay, I'm back. Um, so it's when they reach out their hand and then they turn their hand. So the hand is on top, palm down, like they're trying to dominate the other person. So it's like turning the other person palm up while theirs is palm down. I see Trump do that a lot in handshakes or he'll he, like jerk people in. Pull them in or it depends whose hands he's shaking. You know, if he uh, overrides them, like someone maybe he doesn't trust or like, he'll do that, flip the hand. So his palm is down. So that means I'm on top. I've seen him yank people in towards him. <laughs> Well, yeah, that he does. The a guy lot, has yeah. some, that guy has some guts. All right. The next one is bone shattering shake. And well, that just sounds like what it is. Really firm handshake. And uh, this person shows that they have mastery and enthusiasm. And there's no mistake who's in charge. They will dominate. Limp wrist shake. <clears throat> it's a person who extends only the fingers. Ew. Or who's hand feels like a wet fish when you grasp it it's saying i don't want to touch you or i don't like intimacy it's also a sign of weakness when a man does this in a business situation it may indicate uh trying to manipulate the situation will you take this off presentation really quick i want to show something so with this handshake like this I've seen this manifest in other areas where, for example, I was living in Nicaragua for about 15 months. And when I first got there, this is how people would flag taxis down and wave. And I really had no idea what it meant at first. I thought they were shooing me away because this is what we would do in the United States to shoo somebody away is this. It's like, ugh, get out of here. And what I was intuiting from this language is they are so weak willed that they don't even have the, the authority within them to say taxi come here, right? They have to do it in like a passive limp way. It was such an interesting way to see that come alive. And what I realized living there is that so much of what happens in that country is to keep people down to keep them weak, to keep them uneducated, so much so that now it's manifesting in everyday weak hand gestures. They can't even do a hand gesture with power. Yeah, well, uh, different countries have different language, you know, kind of up the hands. It's like uh, in Japan, you know, they, <clears throat> they do a lot of this, right? You know, credit card back to you is two hands. And it's, yeah, it's depends on the country, right? 
And uh, that's a good observation, this one of being not. Weak willed, right? Yeah. yeah. And... Like losing their ability to like, grab life. Yeah. Limp. Mm -hmm. Limp dink, I call it a limp dink. <laughs> <laughs> you know who does that? <clears throat> shouldn't say it but T. Har Becker he's got this it's like it's it's kind of I don't want to show my hand and I'm not going to show my power right they can be either way right it's or don't touch me I don't want to I don't want you to feel me intimately like his inner world that's how uh, you can describe it too so where are we here and share the screen. Am I sharing? <laughs> nope, not yet. You know, all my things went, <clears throat> there we go. Okay. All my uh, navigation went down. Okay. Okay. And then we have the uh, double handshake. So when the left hand is used to cover the hand that is being shaken, it's called the glove handshake. It shows extra friendliness and intimacy. It's like a hand hug, a little miniature hug. That's the one I use mostly. And it, it's <clears throat> you see that a lot among diplomats. I yeah. do. Yeah, more diplomatic than political, right? Mm-hmm. So these are uh, other movements uh, can also provide insights. So these are kind of different things that we've picked up. So let's go through these. And these are very interesting to watch in someone else. Yeah, so hands hidden from sight. <clears throat> I did all these in my manual with the G7. I love it. Uh, and quite a few of them hid their hands. <clears throat> So this is a secretive gesture and this person may be saying, I don't want to communicate with you or I'm afraid of what you might think or say about me. This goes for hands thrust deep into pockets or hidden from sight. It's like they're saying <clears throat> there can be no hand holding or intimacy until trust is built. It's also hiding your hand, right? It's not showing all your cards. Yeah, it's shoving them in the pocket. A lot of men will stand with their mm -hmm. hands in the pocket and I'll say, why are you pay playing uh, pocket pool? <laughs> Which uh, billiards, pocket billiards, two balls and a cue. Uh, fingers in motion. So active fingers. That was a joke, tap Kelly. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, tapping strumming or other steady beating or ryth rhythm indicate impatience or lack of tolerance. It's a symbolic form of running away where the fingers do the walking, even if the body remains put. Interesting. Yeah, that, that makes sense, right? Because that's like the mental energy staying active with the, with the fingers moving. <clears throat> yeah, some people, even if it's not finger tapping, it can be even like a pen clicking, click, 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 click. You can tell they're impatient. Hands on the lap. So when your palms are up, the person is open and receptive. When palms are hidden, there's aggression, insecurity, or deceit involved. <laughs> I'm just having a funny visual. That's why I'm laughing. Uh, finger steeple, when someone presses their fingers together and rests their chin or mouth on their fingertips, it indicates deep thought <clears throat> as though the person is praying for an answer or even propping themselves up on their thoughts, right? Yeah. Um, it is also a barrier that protects the chest, lower face and mouth. Oh yeah, it's like a way to protect the throat chakra. Yeah, I, I feel that. I'm doing it right now. I'm acting it out. I'm feeling it. Actually, I'm going to invite y'all to do that. Do this with us as we're reading uh, these descriptions. See what changes inside of you, the chemistry that changes when you do these gestures. So yeah, that's with this a lot uh, of what we do in our trainings is get into other people's body positions and feel how it feels. And that's where you get a deep understanding. So if you see a gesture or something that's happening with the person, actually mimic them. 
and you will get that trust your intuition of how that feels mm -hmm. uh fist covered by an open hand so this person is in a position that they may be furious or struggling to stay in control literally trying to get a grip they may be covering their real feelings with words which do not show the level of discomfort this person is feeling well, that's interesting. I'm like picturing in my hand when people punch a fist into their hand. It depends which one they could be holding anger back from <clears throat> if the right hand is over a closed fist of the left. You try that and then do the opposite where emotionally they might be holding back their uh, right uh, fist. So that's usually the one if you're right handed that you would uh, you know, give a, give a hook. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, hands jabbing. This is a person who wants to impose his or ideas in a forceful manner and jabs their hands towards the listener. A less aggressive action is only using the forefinger. Well, I feel like that's more aggressive to point the finger instead of just to use the full hand to talk. Because when I think of Italian speaking, I, I, I'll show you. It depends. Like, you know, they're very active with their hands. Yeah, but when you're pointing uh, a finger, it depends if it's like that or if you're making a point, right? It's Yeah, if you're going like this, yeah. And I just think of like, you know, when Italians are passionate and they're talking. <laughs> but this, this would feel like, way judgment. more intense yeah. yeah depends on the action and <clears throat> so it's just a guideline of, of how it might feel so back at her where are we mm -hmm. i don't see the screen Oh, am I not sharing the screen? Mm -mm. Well, where did she go? <clears throat> well, how come I can't find it there? Okay. I think I'd never done this before. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, hands held behind the bed ahead. This is an arrogant gesture, especially if the person is leaning back. It says, I have so much power. I don't have to defend myself. Now, when this gesture is uh, combined with like a, a figure four with the figure four legs where one leg crosses over the other. Yeah, it's more like the ankle on the other knee. Mm -hmm. So it's showing like the figure four is the, you got the two elbows and then you got the two knees, which are all solar plexus, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like, uh, I don't want to hear anything you have to say because I'm going to back up my own mind. Mm -hmm. Fiddling with wedding ring, when this is, presented as a nervous habit it may indicate something is wrong with the relationship especially if the person is talking about his or her spouse at the time if the person is slowly moving their ring or bracelet in circles it may also indicate the person is attempting or tr trying hard to focus on what's going on or they may be battling with an internal distraction if you're fidgeting with the hands this is the body's attempt to escape the adrenaline is rushing, but the person doesn't know how to get away. Playing with shirt cuffs or jewelry on the wrist tells others attention is needed. In a bar, this action is appropriate, but in a business meeting, it's a distraction. If you're stroking a tie, this is a man's way of saying, I'd like to make a good impression. If your hands are in the air, this is when people don't know what to say. They often run their fingers through the air or toss their hands up. The observer who can read body language knows the person isn't sure about what to say or do next. Yeah, you see that on stage a lot where they, you know, fiddle with their hair a lot 
then it's you like they're trying to grab that next thought. What do I bring forward next? Yeah, and the other one is hugs. I don't think we should go into hugs here. We could maybe do something more on hugs. Maybe, yeah, maybe we could do another show on, on hugs. Yeah, I'm still and... training people that new age hug. Everybody wants to, you know. I says, no, no, no. Someone did it to me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we could tie this in with heart chakra stuff. Yeah. Reaching out with love. And reaching out from the heart. Okay, I've stopped the share. So also, you know, like uh, a lot of people, you know, this time and what's going on in the world is a lot of people talk about this gesture, right? That's the masculine part of the Merkaba. And then a lot of, like, sometimes there's this, Trump does this a lot. Melania has done this quite a bit. They indicate that to me that means the protection of the divine feminine because that's the it's the womb showing the womb. And this is more masculine part of the six pointed Merkaba or eight pointed actually. And this is the the feminine side of the six pointed star, the light worker symbol, and it's the divine feminine side. So yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> which way are we going, right? Mother I want in the womb. I, I'm curious if we were to look at <clears throat> the mudras, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm, I'm clearing stuff out of my lungs. If we were to look at the hand gestures that went with the various chakras, like, you know how each chakra mm -hmm. has a different sound and hand gesture. I'm wondering if the messages in psychosomatic therapy would match up. Like if a mudra was like this, or, you know, there's one this. mudra that's like this, there's all these. And I'm wondering like, if we were to get, to get into the technical, that that'd be something for me to geek out on. If I were to get into the technicality of the mudra, the hand, him, hand symbols. Bleh. I have a whole book on mudras. <clears throat> if it would make sense. I have a whole book on the mudras, hand mudras. I, yeah. I mean, it, it it's what circuits they're connecting. Right. And it, Right. That's what I was thinking. Like, hands. what are we connecting in the mudras? Like, what are we activating? Because what yeah. we teach, right, is learning to press our own buttons. Yeah. That's all yoga is. It's in Tantra. It's how do we move this energy and press our buttons? Well, even well, one thing we didn't have in there is the thumb position. I guess we do it in the manuals. But, you know, as soon as a an adult does this, they're insecure where a child does this, you know, suck their thumb. And that's insecurity. They're holding their will back. And even uh, as you are very aware on stage, we watch for that a lot when people are speaking, mm -hmm. especially about themselves, your insecurities will so get your thumb out. And even for myself, if sometimes I'm on stage and, you know, you have two people stand, you know, talking to each other in front and my insecurities, oh, they're not listening to me. Then the thumb will go in and immediately I'll get it out. And, you know, it's, it's our own gestures. Like what is the body? What's telling our, what is our what's subconscious communicating? communicating to our subconscious is our soul. Right. And uh, you know, what, what is it expressing through us or where is it trapped? And that's where uh, when we look at the whole body and how the hands actually very seldom do we find that the hands are different than what the feet are indicating or the face. So uh, we live in a holographic universe. So what's happening in one part's happening in all. So I just noticed we do have all the hands back here. We the, <laughs> the matrix. Funny. Yeah, I just uh, kind of noticed that about that. Obviously, I've seen it before, but. Just, uh, I've had a hand gesture for a long time where I will hold my hands like this, like just hold one thumb. And I, I understand what it is. And anytime I do it, I'm like, oh, what am I, what am I feeling insecure about? And I open my hands up. And, or is maybe I need a little hug, right? Maybe I, yeah, you know, a little oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, I need a little hug. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I wanted to do these two fingers live for people. I, I think it's fun to do a live reading sometimes. So I've had, well, I want to show you all my fingers first because you can learn a little bit about fingers. You can look at Carol's and mine. Carol, put yours up. Mine look how straight. straight Carol's fingers are. 
and look how mine just, whoop, they come up like this. So looking at just this alone, you could tell that I have a history of not wanting to be in this world. And it makes sense going through what I went through. I was like, get me out of here. Whereas Carol has been a lot more solid and grounded, right? And a lot more, yeah, solid and grounded. She's got the square jaw too. And also her fingers are really straight. So she's very direct about how she directs her power. Whereas in the past, mine was, it was kind of like frazzled and scattering my energy all around. So this is a little bit about how you can see the difference in personality just by hand shape. So I was curious if Carol would read these two fingers right here. Cause what you can see is, this uh, ring finger wants to go over the middle finger, the spiritual finger on both really. And they are bent towards each other too. So the middle finger goes out and the ring finger goes in. Yeah, well, that's you're reaching, your ambition is going to the outer world, right? So, uh, and <clears throat> leaning towards spirituality, even though maybe your spirituality, you're internalizing your spirituality because it's, it's hard to do when I'm pointing at the screen, they can't see me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, especially on the left hand, it's even more so is the spirituality is internalized and then your ambition is going to the outer world, trying to get your your message out to the world right so you're looking to the outer world to uh achieve what you want in this lifetime so uh especially it's on the intellect because even with the fingers yes you maybe don't want to be here but you don't at in the past if you haven't trusted your body you will go mm -hmm. up in your mind <clears throat> so i'm out of here meaning i'm going to go into my intellect mm -hmm. Up here, which corresponds versus, with the forehead, the big yeah. mind, and also the sensitive chin and being smaller than this zone, yeah. connecting it for folks. Yeah. And I would say historically, I, I have been a spiritual being my whole life. I've been fascinated with spirituality since I was a child. Those are the books I like to read. That's what I've been involved in my whole life. Well, even going towards the seminary. Uh, yeah, did that for a while too. Spirituality through religion, and mm -hmm. uh, which causes most of the problems in this world. <laughs> a lot of issues. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and what's fascinating, Carol, is I've been in this place where I've been desiring to bring my spiritual aspects forward more in my work, not have it so compartmentalized, uh, but bring that forward and. I have a feeling it's because I've been curious about these fingers. Like, what are you trying to tell me? And it's already doing the work in me and inviting me into the space of bringing that aspect of me forward. So there's just a little taste. That. I can't even barely do it. You know, <laughs> I know like, mine, I, mine I, cross. I can do this. I can do this with this hand. Very easy. This one, not so easy. Right. So sometimes we watch which, how we hold our fingers and where, where, we find maybe some of the disconnect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one's so easy to do. It's interesting, right? So more in my personality, I'll hold that little finger out where this one, no problem. And uh, a lot of muscle system is <clears throat> patterns, right? You know, in the past, which I felt, you know, a person could feel more comfortable in connecting energies within ourselves and where mm -hmm. maybe some of the, disconnect has come right mm -hmm. so i, I noticed I'm... this finger this one in the last little while with all the talk of gold and silver and money and blah 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 what do you do with everything i've had a little bit of pain right here in this interesting finger. and uh yeah i mean it's just because mm -hmm. you know everyone's saying you know transfer your money into gold or silver or crypto and a lot of it talk is about money, right? So, um, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen next. Mm. What's going to blow up next? So, one anything? other thing I noticed when I put my hands up, and and I'll see if you notice it too. Look how look how much more my left hand is like. You know, you can see the tension because it's like pushing the the fingers. It's almost like pushing away. 
And as I'm like feeling that and acting that out, it's like, I feel very confident in my intellect and how I bring that forward, how that's touching the world. But for some reason, there's been this resistance or pushback in bringing my emotional or spiritual intelligence forward or, or even just having like unresolved tension, emotional tension. It's another way you can read energy, energy flow in the hands. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of even feeling how tense it is. This, I can bend this side way more than this side. Right. And especially in the thumb, well, you can't budge this thumb where some next person, they might be able to fold it right over. Right. Like it's interesting because I, I am double jointed in these thumbs, but since starting this work, when I put my thumb up, you can't push it back. Yeah. So Stop my it. will has gotten stronger, but yeah, there, there has been a history of bending over backwards and overextending myself. Yeah. We can, each finger might be a different tension even, you know, it's not all of it. So a person, you know, how they get a grip on things or how they handle things in this world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so someone that does a lot of farm work, they might be a lot stiffer in their joints uh, or someone that's quite stubborn. Uh, they'll have a lot more resistance in the hands because it's how they handle things. So. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah. So there's so much in uh, the hands and uh, hopefully our last one is, uh, we did on our show was on parasites parasites yeah. yeah and we were going to do parasites this week and Gbresca had something come up so we are going to do parasites three yeah. we're just not sure when yeah it's coming soon so um yeah so kelly you want to uh talk a little bit about your program and what's coming up uh you've got some face reading classes yes. and yeah yes yeah, so this month or no we're in october in November, uh, <laughs> I have two training dates. I've had lots of people ask about a weekday training. So I'm experimenting. I'm offering a weekday training and a weekend training. So November 7th and November 11th, uh, that'll be nine to four mountain time. And that comes with a fully illustrated manual. You get to retake it for free. I'm going to review the first 10 to 15 reports that you have and give you feedback and coaching on it. Because what is important is that you actually comprehend and put this language to use. We're not here to keep taking, taking, taking. We're here to teach you how to fish so you can feed yourself. And then I also have my So Much Love program. I'm in the process of relaunching this and giving you two opportunities to step into body language reading. And this is for folks that aren't able to make it to Costa Rica and would like to understand how to apply body language to how to heal, how to uh, get into the practical aspects of reprogramming. And this program was inspired by me healing from my own complex trauma and taking the best of the best tools that I had and putting them in a, putting them in a course that makes sense. So I teach you from the, your foundation, from your root chakra, from your feet, all the way up to your head and teaching you how to use your body differently so you can hold it in alignment and different embodiment practices to meet the stories where they are and in real time begin to reprogram that and this is like carol says this is not a modality this is a lifestyle learning to hear from your body's language and respond is a lifestyle right you don't just marry somebody one day and be like well i said my vows and i talk to you on marriage day. So we're good. <laughs> That's so silly. Right. And it's the same with our soul. Every day is this beautiful conversation as we saw in this, even in this short video with y'all, how the love and the wisdom from our soul is written in our body. Our wisdom is rooted in our experiences and, and, and should be rooted in love, right? It's, it's from within. So this is what this program is about. It's teaching you to reprogram and realign to your truth and your love from within. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's part of the awakening and so much of our trauma has been trapped in the body or negative experiences is where we hold it onto some old unresolved issues. So uh, that's what uh, body awakening method is, is to take you through a whole journey through cellular memory in my online program. 
And so I'm thinking of even activating the coaching part of it again, or the, the calls and uh, yeah, just uh, taking you through a step-by-step -step process. And then you can choose to uh, go forward with our 14 day training here in Costa Rica. Kelly's program gives you a taste of it. Even if, if it's the face reading, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful taste of uh, what you can actually learn and understand about yourself. And then you can go deeper when you come face reading mm -hmm. is something we can do online um obviously in person you get you know we, it's hard to do the body online so those are in house training and our next course is we're taking applications for is for uh february 17th to march 1st and then we have may 25th or 23rd i, I don't have it right off the top may it was the end of may may 25th yeah to july Rude. 7th i remember july 7th because my parents wedding anniversary so <laughs> i do remember july 7th uh so we have a few coming up we run them um, you know a few times uh hopefully we want to get up to at least three to four times a year uh and uh yeah and get you all trained we only take eight people at a time at our live trainings because it's so intense it's so in-depth and each mm -hmm. person's life is so important mm -hmm. and uh you know people spend a lot of money on a vehicle but you know this is the vehicle of your soul and to make that commitment to understanding yourself and to really step into your true mission and we see people just evolve through our our trainings it blows mm -hmm. my mind from uh what i was uh, you know 23 years ago when i first started this you know people didn't even know what a chakra is and people are so alive and awake right now and they want to understand and before they would just oh life just goes on but as much as you can experience in this lifetime it it is in your soul's memory so we try to mm -hmm. open as much that's what the uh, the ascension is all about is to open our blinders and to see mm -hmm. how we can become the best of who we are and work through our challenges. And we all have them. We all have our shit. And we all have our idiosyncrasies. It's just being able to look at it and maybe have a laugh about it. And maybe we can breathe through it and um, really to get a life's review uh within a very short period of time we can take people catapult them into releasing decades mm -hmm. of trauma and how to move forward in their life with a plan with uh, mm -hmm. listening to themselves and this connects us with our intuition intuition isn't here it's in the body you got to feel it you got to feel uh and listen to the feelings and most people alienate themselves from their own feelings which we all have in our own way so um yeah so if you're interested uh all our information is down below please like this video and if you feel inspired uh definitely uh connect on grassroots warrior network is where our show is every monday at 11 a.m or 9 a.m mountain time right and um yeah, or you can go on uh, Kelly Love Rewilding on Rumble, right? And Instagram, it's pretty well the same all over Facebook. Kelly yeah. puts out a lot of great information on uh, little clips of... Uh, Body language, spirituality. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Rumble on the Lightworkers Institute that has all our shows on. I don't post too much on Rumble above... And beyond that so if you want them all in one place and you don't have to go through grassroots because there is 21 different anchors and they've just signed mm -hmm. on uh a daily show right now is uh lewis herms is uh on with them on screw big gov daily monday through friday show um on current affairs they've now signed wow that's a lot grassroots yeah well robert does it robert bruce poppy so yeah they live streamed uh the whole uh truth tour 77 on there and i think we had almost 10,000 people watch on grassroots 
a never mind. They must have an editing team. I can't even imagine doing five videos a week. <laughs> they do it live. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's no editing. So it's live. Yeah, it's live on grassroots or on Screw Big Gov or uh, Renegade Media. It's it's posted in a lot of different places. So you can't even really tell you know, how many views a person has, because it's just like ours, you know, I don't have many views, because I've never promoted my Rumble channel, except here. So uh, most of uh, people watching is on grassroots. And then Kelly, you post a little bit more. It's just I just kind of yeah, started that I Rumble try to, channel. I try to keep the content consistent on all the platforms. Um, yeah, I did want to say one other thing with the uh, so much love, I'm going to have a self study and a group coaching self-study is for those who are healing on a budget and are self-motivated oh, and yeah. need something. So, and there's always the option to upgrade to the group coaching. So you never lose your investment. We're here to see you grow. Yeah. Grow, grow, grow. As you grow, we grow. That's how I see it. <laughs> I, we're all living in a multi-level marketing scheme. You know, it's just whoever is uh, come through our programs, and as their lives expand, it expands all of our lives from soul to soul, right? Soul to soul mm -hmm. connection. So that's what we're here for. We give back as much as we can. And uh, yeah, make sure you watch our other, we have, this is our 23rd episode. We have everything from trauma and the womb to transgenderism to parasites. Reading, hands, to reading breath, reading the spine. There's so much in there. Yeah. And the new healing maps with uh, Dylan Lewis Monroe, you know, there's a lot of different things. So uh, enjoy and we will see you next week. Mwah. Hi everyone, my name's Logan. I'm a red solar dragon, <laughs> which I found out through this program. Um, yeah, what a beautiful process and exchange with uh, the rest of my cohort. I've made three sisters since I've been here. I've loved being tutored by Kelly and Carol throughout this entire two week program. I've learned so much about myself and had the opportunity to really, to really relax and soften into my feminine, honestly, into not being so proactive and doing, doing, doing all the time, which has felt just amazing. So many shifts in my body, so much learning about the woman that I want to become and, and keep training towards. Um, yeah, I would say the highlight of this trip has really been the softening and being able to be seen and see other people in such a vulnerable but protected space. Um, and I would highly recommend it for anybody who is on their healing journey or or somebody who wants to help other people because you have to you have to go through it to show other people the way and yeah it's a beautiful place in Costa Rica this sanctuary you can hear the river behind me and the birds chirping around me it's just a magical place to relax and detox your body mind and the food is amazing. The accommodations were so relaxing. I listened to the river all night after full, hot, home-cooked meals. Was never hungry, <laughs> that's for sure. So yeah, please give this program a shot if you are willing to take the next step to get to know yourself.